Hello Legacy Sabres, this is our first flipped video and this is Littlefield here talking to you and our first unit is functions and then our first lesson is going to be vocabulary of functions. Most of this stuff should be review and if it's not that's good that we're going over it from Algebra 1. So it's a lot of things that we should already know about functions from Algebra 1 and if you forgot that's okay that's why we're refreshing. So in Algebra 2, it's clearly an extension from Algebra 1. So what that means is that we're going to focus on more complex types of functions rather than just lines or just quadratics like you learned in Algebra 1. So let's say something more like this, which right now seems a little daunting and scary, but as we go on, we're going to really understand what functions are and what that means to us in terms of Algebra 2. So our essential question as we go on through this lesson today is what is a function? What do I remember about functions and what that means? So as we take notes today, make sure you look in the upper right hand corner and whenever there's a pencil there, that's when you want to write in your foldable or in your notes. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And if there's no pencil, you're just listening. So more specifically for today's lesson, we have these three learning targets or I can statements. The first being that I can state the domain and range of a relation. The second being I can determine if a relation is a function. And lastly, I can evaluate a function given function notation. And that may be new to us depending on who you had as an Algebra 1 teacher last year, but we're going to cover it today, so we should not be worried. So in Algebra 1, you spent a lot of time making tables and you would view equations like the function machine below. So we would have some input values. The most common ones are starting at 1, counting up, 1, 2, 3, 4. We remember we can pick our input values whenever we're talking about functions. And then we put it into this function machine or the rule. Let's say the rule is some algebraic expression like 2x plus 1. And then when we get the output, all we're doing is plugging that number, the input values, in for the variable x and then seeing what the output is. So if we plugged 1 in for x, that'd be 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3. So that's how we get all of our output values. Notice how you don't have to write this down yet. We still don't have a pencil on the slide, so just bear with me. Just trying to go over the basics of what you should already know from Algebra 1. Hopefully this function machine looks familiar, and that can be a good mental image as we go on throughout the lesson today. Now we finally get to some writing. So if you open your foldable and find the mathematical definitions, we have two words, relation and function, that we want to talk about their mathematical definitions. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs with a domain x values and a range y values. Remember from Algebra 1 that the domain is all of the x values on your graph and the range is all the y values on your graph. So a relation is something as simple as a set of ordered pairs, and we can see in just a second in the slide ahead of us how they can be viewed differently rather than just writing an ordered pair in a set of parentheses. So make sure you get that definition down. Function, next word that we need to have the definition of, is a special relation where each value in the domain is paired with exactly one value in the range. And hopefully you guys remember this definition of a function for forever in your math careers because it's very, 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 very important. I cannot stress it enough. So function is a special relation or a special set of ordered pairs where each value in the domain is paired with exactly one in the range. So let's see what that looks like. Make sure you get these definitions written down. Okay, so let's look at examples of functions. So for each example, state the domain and range of the relation and then determine if it is a function. So example one is a table, which you should be familiar with. You did a lot of tables in Algebra 1. So our left column would be our x values and our right side of column would be our y values. So the domain we said in our relation was our x values. So, <clears throat> and our range would be the y's. So we, when we write domain and range, there's a lot of different ways we can write it. This is just one type of 
notation for the domain and range. D stands for domain. And then no matter how it's listed in the table, we go smallest to largest in numbers. So we have the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 all listed in the domain. And then on the range, notice how we went from the smallest number, negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, all, to the, all the way to the biggest number, 2. So we just stated the domain and range. So let's think back to the definition of a function. A function is a special relation where each value in the domain is paired with exactly one value in the range. Is that true? We have 0 paired to, neg to 2, sorry. We have 1 paired to negative 1, 2 to negative 4, and 3 to negative 7. And they all are paired with exactly 1 in the range. So this means that, yes, our table is a function. So another way that we can view a function is by a mapping diagram. In example 1, we looked at a table. Now we can look at a mapping diagram. So in the left bubble or circle oval, however you want to look at it, we have our x's or our domain. And then in the y's, we have our range or the right bubble, oval, circle, however you want to see it. So let's list the domain. The domain is the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the range, since it's an alphabet, I mean, let's just play devil's advocate here and we're just mapping something to something thinking back to that machine type of function idea it doesn't have to be a number to a number we're just labeling an x value to a y value and that doesn't matter if it's a number to a letter a letter to a letter a number to a number so just put it in order so we alphabetized it b c d in our range rather than just putting how it's listed d b c okay so think back the domain has to be paired with exactly one value in the range so 1 is paired with D, 2 is paired with B, 3 is paired with C, and 4 is paired with C. So all that matters is that from the X to Y direction, <clears throat> that they are all going to something different. So 3 is going to C, and 4 is going to C. So my biggest question is, is that okay? And yes, that is okay, because each domain or X value is getting paired to exactly one range value and it's okay if it's the same range value three is getting paired to c and four is getting paired to c so that's perfectly fine we'll see what not a function looks like in a mapping diagram right now so we have the x values of sorry we didn't label it x values of negative eight negative five and seven and y values of negative six one two and three so let's list our domain the value is negative 8, negative 5, and 7 in these curly brackets, and our range is negative 6, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so the biggest difference here is that this negative 8 has two arrows going to negative 6. So is that okay? Is the domain getting paired with exactly one value in the range? No, it's not. Negative 8 is getting paired with two values in the range. So this would mean that it's not a function. So the biggest difference that you guys want to notice or see is that you can have something in the range having multiple arrows going to it, but you can't have something in the domain having multiple arrows going to the range. So notice this difference here and here, how this relation is a function and how this relation is not a function. So make sure you get that down in your notes. But what if the points are already graphed and they're not given to us in a table or a diagram? That's when we use the vertical line test. So a relation is a function if a vertical line drawn through its graph passes through only one point. The directions on like how we use the vertical line test, and you should have done this in Algebra 1, are like that second bullet. So if we take a pencil and move it from left to right, if it crosses more than one point, then we know it's not a function. So let me show you what that is, but make sure that you jot these two bullet points down first. So would this graph be a function if we use the vertical line test? So here's my pencil, and I'm going to move it. I'm going to keep moving it. Oh, right here. It hit two points, right? And if we keep going, it's going to keep hitting more points, right? Because the graph opens up, or opens to the right, excuse me, like this. So my pencil is hitting two points. So that would mean that this graph is actually not a function. So that's how we would use the vertical line test for that one.
what about this graph if we did the vertical line test would this graph be a function so here's my pencil I'm gonna keep going so far I've only hit one point right so I keep going and I only hit one point at the top we never crossed two points at once so that would mean that yes it is a function so let's take a look at one more example and that should be fairly simple because we recognize right away that it's a line so yes it's a function so what about this funky graph would it be a function using the vertical line test here's my pencil I'm gonna move it to the from left to right and I've already hit two points right and if I keep going I still keep hitting two points and here I'm gonna hit another two points if I keep going to the right so that means no it would not be a function okay so back to writing in our foldable often the function rules were written in algebra 1 as something like y equals 3x plus 4. now we're going to use something more in algebra 2 called function notation the y is replaced with the name for the function so this is what it's going to read instead of y equals 3x plus 4 now we have f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. when you see this f parentheses x parentheses you read that as f of x so f is the name of the function x is the input value and then the thing on the right side of the equation is the mathematical rule for the function or the machine if you will from the beginning of our notes and then f of x how we read that i'll write it here f of x is how we say that little notation that is our y value or the value of f at x or f of x so that's replacing our y value so that becomes our range essentially okay so let's look at some examples using func function notation and then evaluating function rules so let's look at example a the equation that we have or the function that we have is f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 7 so we need to evaluate this for when x is equal to negative 2. so my directions are telling me that my input is negative 2 right and we said f of x this is my input so wherever i see an x i'm going to replace it with a negative 2. think of like substitution so instead of f of x we're evaluating the function at value negative 2. So instead of f of x in general, they told me evaluated at x is equal to negative 2. So now we're saying f of specifically negative 2 is equal to negative 3 times negative 2 plus 7. We're plugging in that negative 2, this input, wherever we see an x. So now there's nothing to solve with f of negative 2. That's just telling me the function evaluated at the value negative 2 is going to be equal to some value that's what we have to solve so pemdas first we have to take negative 3 times negative 2 we should all know that that's 6 plus 7 i know this is really hard mental math for your first day of taking notes but we should all know that 6 plus 7 is yes 13 so we're saying f of negative 2 is equal to 13 so the function at the value negative 2 is equal to 13 now let's look at the function g of x so example b so the function g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 10. so now we're still evaluating the function g now for the input value of negative 2. so now we're saying g of negative 2 is equal to remember we're going to put a negative 2 wherever that x is so negative 2 squared make sure you put that in parentheses and i'll explain why plus 2 times a negative 2 minus 10. so we needed to put negative 2 in parentheses because negative 2 squared and negative 2 in parentheses squared are two very different things negative 2 squared is saying that just the 2 is getting squared so that's actually negative 4 whereas here it's a positive 4 so negative 2 quantity squared is going to be 4 and we know 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4 minus 10 and so g of negative 2 is equal to that and now we need to keep solving using PEMDAS so g of negative 2 is equal to 4 minus 4 is 0 minus 10 and we know 
that 0 minus 10 is a negative 10. So my final answer is the function g at the value of negative 2 is equal to negative 10. So hopefully you can get those two examples down in your notes, and then we have two more, and then that's it for today. Okay, so another way that we can evaluate is um, by first finding f of or g of something. So on the last two examples, they told me what x is, and now they're just telling me to find f of negative 4. So remember that anything in this set of parentheses is my input value or like my x. So what they're really telling me is that x is equal to negative 4 and find y or find the function at the value of negative 4. We need to find that value. So f of negative 4 is equal to negative 3 times negative 4 plus 7. So we're just plugging in negative 4 wherever we see an x. f of negative 4 is like my y, so there's nothing that's going on here. We're just saying the function being evaluated at the input value, negative 4, is equal to, now we do PEMDAS, negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12 plus 7. And so we know what 12 plus 7 is. That's 19, so we know that the function at the value of the input negative 4 is equal to 19. Now let's look at finding g of negative 1. So this is like saying that my x is negative 1. So wherever I see an x, here, here, and here, I'm plugging in the value negative 1 because that's my input. So g of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared, make sure that's in parentheses, plus 2 times negative 1 minus 10. So negative 1 squared is the same thing as negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Now we have 2 times a negative 1, which is a negative 2 minus 10. And that's all equal to g of negative 1. Now we just do PEMDAS from left to right. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1 minus 10. I'm just stepping out every tiny step in my math here, and negative 1 minus 10 is a negative 11. If you go in the hole $10 and you've already been in the hole $1, you're now in debt $11. And that is all I have for you. Hopefully we will get better as the year goes on with function notation, and hopefully this was mostly review about definitions of functions and more fun things about functions. Functions won't ever leave us in Algebra 2, so hopefully we'll get comfortable with it as the year goes on. Thanks, everybody. Hope you're taking good notes.